JT Barrett was the star at Ohio State, but because of an injury, Cardell Jones took the spotlight and helped the Buckeyes win the national championship that year. Barrett would return and become the best statistical quarterback in Ohio State football history, but when you flash forward to 2020, he's not even on an NFL roster at this point. And my question is, what happened to his once promising football career? Today we will talk about the rise and fall of JT Barrett, but first, if you're new to the channel, I really need you to take a quick moment to subscribe, smash that like button, drop a future video suggestion, and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload of mine. Now let's get started with what happened to JT Barrett. Like so many players I cover on this channel, JT was born in the fertile football grounds of Texas, more specifically Wichita Falls. In a town that was all ranches and oil, JT grew up a Texan and like most other residents, took a liking to the game of football. He was a gifted athlete from a very young age and he was actually a Texas Longhorns fan. When he was 8 years old, he fell in love with the Longhorns, Mac Brown, and Vince Young became his idol. He continued to blossom into a young star, and once he got to Ryder High School, his stock only grew more. He quickly became one of the best dual threat high school quarterbacks in the country, and his dream to sport the burnt orange never left his heart. Sadly for JT, that offer would never come. The Longhorns wanted Tyrone Swoops instead, and he was the guy that Texas would end up taking in that class. If Mac Brown could go back and remake that decision about who to choose, I think it's pretty obvious who he would have gone with. Tyrone Swoops had a memorable play to beat Notre Dame, but besides that, he was a very forgettable player in the college football and for Texas. JT on the other hand, he would become a star. Before he could shine on the collegiate stage, he had to pick a place to play. JT was considered a 4 star recruit by every major recruiting site, and one even listed him as the top dual threat guy in the country. JT was a tad bit undersized, but what he lacked in height he made up in every other area. He could both run the ball and sling the rock, and schools took notice. Despite growing up a Longhorn fan, he visited Oklahoma in hopes of getting an offer there, but he was the backup plan to another kid named Cody Thomas. The Sooners took Cody over JT, and this was another decision that Oklahoma staff wishes they could probably redo. Cody Thomas only played two seasons before he switched to baseball, and he basically did nothing for Oklahoma. Thankfully for JT, Ohio State had sent some scouts to watch JT throw, and they came away very impressed with him. Then offensive coordinator Tom Herman took a liking to him and told Urban Meyer to offer him. With Braxton Miller and Cardell Jones already on the roster, Barrett would be seen as a filler guy at best, and he would end up taking that option. Despite the heartbreak on the recruiting trail, JT was on the path to greatness even though he could not see it yet. After committing to Ohio State, 24-7 Sports ranked JT Barrett as the number 2 dual threat quarterback and the 135th best player in the class of 2013. The funny thing is a few years later, Tom Herman would become the head coach at Texas and he probably would have been able to go there. But JT was ready to shock both Ohio State and the college football world as a freshman. He redshirted his first year and was supposed to be the backup behind young superstar Braxton Miller, but luckily for JT, he would get thrown into the mix earlier than anyone could have ever expected. Going into the 2014 season, the Buckeyes were expected to be title contenders, but things became very concerning after Braxton Miller tore his labrum in his shoulder just a few weeks before the season had begun. He would start their first game against Navy and throw for two touchdowns in his debut. The following week he'd be given his first real test, a home matchup against Virginia Tech. Buckeye fans were concerned after he threw for three interceptions in the team's loss. One would think this would rattle his confidence, but it actually did quite the opposite. He would throw for six touchdowns against Kent State, four against Cincinnati, and four against Maryland, and all of a sudden, he was a young college football star. The Buckeyes were winning games, but they had a huge matchup against Penn State. Barrett struggled, but the Buckeyes survived in double overtime. From there, he would lead them to wins against number 8 Michigan State, number 25 Minnesota, and Indiana before his first big game against Michigan. He didn't exactly impress, but they did take care of business before disaster struck. Barrett would go down with a broken ankle, and now his season was over. Cardell Jones came in and won the game, but this was really devastating. Not only was his Heisman campaign in the drain, but what was going to happen to the team's title hopes? In came Cardell Jones. He started the year as the third string quarterback, but going into the Big Ten Championship game, he was somehow now the starter. He would not only go off, but Ezekiel Elliott would explode, and the Buckeyes went all the way to the title game where they would easily beat Oregon. Cardell Jones did so well, many people forgot about JT Barrett, and he was likely going to be the starter going into the 2015 season. As a redshirt freshman, Barrett threw for 2,834 yards, 34 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions while becoming a young star. In 2015, Urban Meyer named Cardell Jones the starter, and JT was the forgotten backup. Braxton Miller had moved to wide receiver, and the Buckeyes were loaded with talent. They would get revenge in week one against Virginia Tech, 
after Braxton Miller's iconic spin move, and they have gone to start out with a 7-0 record. Idiotically, Barrett was suspended one game for a DUI on Halloween, and that was just very stupid of him. Cardell Jones had struggled to a degree, and by midway through the season, Barrett would now be the starter against Rutgers. In that game, he would throw for three scoring tosses, and it was once again a quarterback battle. He would play in each remaining game, but Ohio State's playoff chances looked very bleak after they lost by way of a game-winning field goal to Michigan State. They would easily take care of Michigan, but they would miss out on the Big Ten Championship game. They would have to settle for the Fiesta Bowl, where they would take care of the number 8 Notre Dame Fighting Irish. As a sophomore, JT threw, for JT threw for 992 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 4 interceptions. Luckily for him, Cardale Jones had left for the NFL, so he would be the starter for the 2016 season. In their first game against Bowling Green, Barrett set the record for most touchdowns in a game with 7, and he was the player of the week. He struggled against Tulsa before a huge 4 touchdown performance in their win over number 14 Oklahoma. That would be the height of his hype though, as he would struggle in his next few games, and they would lose to Penn State in one of the most memorable games of the decade. Against number 10 Nebraska, he threw for 4 touchdowns, and he had earned the fans' trust back. The Buckeyes would inch out a close win over Michigan State, and then beat Michigan in double overtime for the Big Ten East crown. They would go on to become the free seed in the college football playoff, but the hype didn't last as they got shut out by Clemson in a very embarrassing game. As a junior, JT had his ups and downs, but he threw for 2,555 yards, 24 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions. Even if he had had a bad season, he was likely going to set the all-time record for Buckeye touchdowns, and he had become a legend. They would open up the season against Indiana under the lights, and he would throw three touchdowns in their win. He struggled in their loss to Oklahoma, and they were now behind the eight ball in the college football playoff race. A petition to bench JT was started, and they wanted Tate Martell to get a chance. Urban had faith in him though, and he would throw for 18 touchdowns in his next five games, and the Buckeyes were right back on track. He helped lead them to a comeback against number two Penn State, and by this time, he had secured the record for most touchdowns in school history. He'd have one of the worst games of his career against Iowa as he threw three interceptions in their blowout road loss. The playoff was done for the senior quarterback, but the East was still up for grabs and a good bowl game too. He would help lead them to a win over number 12 Michigan State, and he would win on senior night against Illinois. He would beat Michigan for the fourth time, and they would head to the Big Ten Championship game. Number four Wisconsin was safely in the playoff if they won, but Barrett played spoiler and Ohio State beat them. They would not get in the playoff, but they would get a chance to go to the Rose Bowl and play USC. In Barrett's final game, he did not play very well, and he didn't even throw a touchdown. He threw for over 3,000 yards his senior year, and also threw for 35 touchdowns. He would go down as the all-time leader in both Buckeye touchdowns and career passing yards. He didn't win the most games and sometimes fell apart in big moments, but statistically, he was the best quarterback in Ohio State history. So his success would likely transfer to the NFL, right? Well, let's take a look. Because of his up-and-down career and mediocre athletic measurables, JT Barrett went undrafted. This was honestly a shock to me and a lot of college football fans, and only two teams really wanted his talent. The Indianapolis Colts and New Orleans Saints both offered him a spot in camp, and he would end up choosing the Saints. He signed a deal with them, but he was constantly waived and re-signed to the practice squad. He then spent some time with the Seahawks, Saints again, and the Steelers, but he never made the main roster and was always getting waived. He has not on any team as of September 2020, and I hope he someday gets a chance. It does look like his professional football career is in a downward spiral, and I honestly don't think he'll actually get another chance, but I think it's just because he's not an NFL prototype quarterback. He's the classic case of someone who was a star in college, but didn't pan out in the league. Watching the Ohio State quarterback carousel was a lot of fun back in the day, and JT Barrett will always be a college football legend. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash that like button, and let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, and let me know who I should do next. Now check out my video about the rise of Justin Fields and all my other college football what happened to videos. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.